Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Trio by Happy Camper. This is a three to six player game of ages eight and up, and it takes roughly about 20 to 30 minutes to play. In the game Trio, you're all about finding the lucky number of cards. Three. Three of any of the same number and sets of those. Throughout the game, you're going to get a number of cards. There'll be a number of cards in the middle of the table, and each opponent is also going to get a number of cards. You're going to divvy your cards up from lowest to highest, and you're going to start asking the question. Highest card or lowest card, or pick a random one. If you get a pair, you'll get an extra turn to try and get a trio. And if you can get a trio, you'll form a set. Three sets is you're the winner of the game. And there's a few other little variants like spicy mode that change things up. But in general, the idea is getting those three three exact numbers. Can you do it? Find out in the game trio as we talk about my explanation of how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. Setting up the game trio is actually quite simple. What you're going to do in the game is, depending on the number of players, you're going to set up cards for each player and, of course, a number of cards in the middle. I'm going to explain a three-player game. And in a three-player game, each player will get nine cards, and the middle of the table will get nine as well. Set those nine that are in the middle of the table into a three by three grid. And then each player with their nine cards is going to take those cards and arrange them from lowest to highest, going from left to right on their board. After you've arranged, you're going to go ahead and set these cards down so that you form kind of a long row of cards. Thusly, each player will know that your lowest is on your left and your highest is on your right. Each other player will do that as well, kind of forming their own unique rows. And thusly, you'll know the difference between the middle of the table, each opponent, and of course, yourself. From there, go ahead and select a player, maybe the youngest player to go first, or the most recent player to collect a trilogy of something, and start the game trio. Playing the game trio is actually quite simple, and the way it works is the starting player, me, the youngest of course, is going to be the one who selects two cards to reveal. You can reveal cards in one of two ways. Either A, you choose a player, including yourself, to reveal their highest or lowest card. It's always going to be the card to their left or to their right. Um, or you can choose to, option two, reveal a card from the middle, this, this little area here, this three by three. If you match a pair, you'll get an opportunity for a trio, allowing yourself to have another action, whether it is to reveal the highest or lowest of one of the players, or flip once again from the middle here. You can do any combination of these as long as you get a pair up to three times. Otherwise, if you don't match, you get nothing. So for instance, it's my turn. I'm going to choose my first action to reveal this card here. That's a four. Okay, I know that's a low number. I want to reveal another four, hopefully. Do I have four as my lowest? I don't, so I'm not going to choose myself. Instead, I'll choose Bill over here. Bill is going to reveal their lowest, which is a one. One and four don't match. Thusly, I'm going to go ahead and flip these cards face down, and that will end my turn. However, let's just say it was my first turn and I was a little bit, um, I don't know, better at this game or just a little bit more lucky. I would go ahead and choose to reveal um, just like normal. I go, okay, I'm going to choose to have Susie over here. I'm going to have her reveal her lowest and her lowest is going to be a three. Wonderful. Now, I know that's a low card here, so I need to find another low card. Am I going to choose from the middle or will I choose myself? Well, I know I have a three, so I will reveal a three over here. Wow, great, now I've got a pair. My turn's not over. That means I'll get one more opportunity to try and find a three. Now I could choose this player over here, Bill, or I can go for the middle. If I choose Bill and I reveal, and oh, it's that one, I have actually failed and that would end my turn. But if I got lucky and flipped over a card from the middle and it was a three, that would result in a trio, which means that I've scored one of the three trios I need to win the game. I'll go ahead and just give my, you know, old college try and reveal here. That's a nine, I failed, but hopefully I would have gotten a three. Otherwise, I'll just remember these cards for next time, and of course my opponents will as well, and it will pass to the next player in clockwise order. They'll have an opportunity they're going to go and say they want to flip over their highest, which is 10. They're going to ask this player over here to flip over their highest. That's 11. Pass. And the game is just going to keep going from there, trying to reveal cards either from the highest or lowest of a player or from the middle of the table. And you can do any combination thereof. And if you get a pair, then you get an opportunity for three times in which you can try and get a trio. If you score three sets of three, you win the game. It's pretty straightforward and simple. There's a few other little interesting rules and whatnot that I'll talk about in my review. So a few caveats for Trio before we start. Caveat number one is there are three ways to win the game. One way, which I've already explained, is getting three sets of three. 
The next way is finding a spicy connection, which is of course, you're going to get a set of three at one point or another. And then at the bottom of that card, there's going to be number or numbers or a number. And if you can find a matching trio of that number, you can win the game. And the final one is if you find sevens. If you instantly get a, a trio of sevens, regardless of where anybody else is at, then you're going to win the game. These sevens are obvious, they're in gold and they are foiled. So if you're able to pull that off, which is quite difficult, you can instantly win. There's also a team mode variant of the game where you can play with multiple players on your team against another team and you'll be able to swap cards. It plays very similar to the base game of Trio with some unique little aspects of winning together and being able to trade cards between each other. Uh, this game is literally a memory game. This is all about flipping over to cards, trying to reveal matching pairs, and then hopefully going for a trio. You obviously know that you can only pull from the highest or lowest cards of each player, which Leslie, you're going to get an idea of what their hand is like once you see their highest and lowest card. If their highest card is a seven and their lowest is a six, well, you're going to know that their hand is quite tight as far as what is available to them. Maybe they even have more than one of each of the cards in their hand. Three sixes in a row, two sevens, and then three eights or something. It could be something crazy like that. Or if maybe your opponent has a one and a 12, maybe their hands are more spaced out. And so you kind of have to guess and check based on what the players are looking for, what players are like flipping over on their board, or maybe based on memory what other players have passed up on or failed to find a match for. And so the game starts to ramp up as the game progresses. I love the idea of having your own set of cards and having your own knowledge, but only being able to access certain numbers here. Knowing that your opponent is looking for a 10 and sadly your 10 is a little deeper into your deck is kind of a nice feeling and also realizing that when you start playing cards to form trios you're kind of opening up the playing space to allow the other players to score adding the spicy mode is make very nice but it makes the game a little quicker so if you don't mind that that's fine but the idea of some cards are more challenging to find trios of and thusly they're going to have an easier way to find a spicy connection and some cards are really difficult to get a trio of and thusly their connection is a lot easier to connect with and i like that kind of feeling in the game this is nice, it's a light game, this is a fun party style game, it's a family game. This is a game that you can pretty much play anywhere. It does require a little bit more table space uh, for just the number of cards in the deck. There's literally just a set, 12 sets of three of each of the cards here. So it's a smaller type box game. The quality of the game is excellent. Actually, all the cards are very nice. I like the foiling on the seven. It kind of makes that card stand out and it should for a reason. It's very important. And if somebody gets it before you finish your trio or your spicy connection, you'll lose the game. The box is high quality. I like the fact that it's also got gloss on it. Uh, it just feels good. It's one of those games that I can bring out and teach anybody to play in like five minutes. Okay, you got it, zero cards, I get my cards. All you're trying to do is flip over cards to find pairs. And if you find a pair, go for the trio. If you get three trios, trios you win the game and then you can add the little extra spicy variants to it as you will or if you want to play on teams to make it a little bit more cooperative you can do that as well production quality the style of the game the art for just simply being numbers is great i love the fact that they are also um a little bit larger playing size cards it has it really big and bold as to each of the numbers with their own colors as well as of course it's kind of like uh, poker style cards. You can see the numbers in your hand when you're just, just basically when you're trying to set the cards up in your hand to organize them by the lowest to highest, you can see them a lot easier like a poker hand. And then you can go ahead and simply flush them face down. And then the only thing you need to worry about after that is gonna be the big number in the middle. So it kind of even just adds a little extra to the game for that. The only negative I have for Trio, which can be a pretty big one, other than just that it is a light type of game, is for people who have terrible memory I'm probably never gonna win a game like this, especially when I'm playing with people who have good memory, flipping over cards, revealing them, and having to remember their position, whether it be in the um, player's hand or whether it be on the middle of the table in a grid. I have to remember not only like, is it was it his highest or his lowest, or was it like this top left card or the middle card or the bottom right? And having to remember up to three cards is challenging. I mean, luckily for me, you do get your own set of cards, so you can utilize those. Sometimes you'll get pairs or maybe I can remember two and so I only have to try and go for one but yeah it is definitely a memory game so memory game players you're gonna like this if you are not good with like short-term memory then 
probably one to stay away from. Yeah, I like this game. This is a lot of fun. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. If you're looking for a heavy, thick style game, it might not be for you. If you don't like the idea of there being quite a bit of luck in the game, you might get lucky and just pull some trios out. They're quick games. If you get lucky and just flip over cards and find those matching pairs and players have previously played certain cards, you know what their highest card is when you're looking for the 10 and you flip over a 10. It's not going to be necessarily for those type of people, those heavier style gamers, but this is a great game to play in between games. This is a great game to bring out in family, friends, parties, that kind of stuff, and it just works really well. I actually really, really like Trio. If you're interested in Trio, I highly suggest you take a look at it. If it seems like a game that you guys would kind of enjoy, then this is definitely going to be one I would suggest taking a look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Trio by Happy Camper. If you're interested in the game, there is a link down below in the description where you can pick the game up. And of course, if you really like the video, please consider giving us a subscribe, hit the like button, go ahead and leave us a comment about whether or not you like the game, what do you like or what do you not like about it, have you played this game before? Uh, I do check the comments, I do comment, uh, reply often, so I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, we also have a live stream every every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we stream on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and X. And if you want to watch us play games like this one, you can do that right over there. You can watch us play the games, ask us questions, and it's a good way also to learn if it's a game you want to buy. Rather than just hearing about it and learning the rules and whatnot, it's kind of nice to see gameplay and watch other players play. And my gaming group is, we got a wide variety of different people, so each can be kind of unique in their own world, and you kind of identify with one of those players to see if that's the type of game you would like. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to finding my trio next time.